record button. We are recording. Hi, everyone. It's October 5th, and this is the community call. It's our special community call because it's the first, uh, I almost said Monday, first Tuesday of the month. And this is the time where we kind of do a wrap up of what's been happening in each working group over the course of the last few weeks since the last monthly one, even though these meetings do happen weekly. So we just like to confuse things by throwing in a special one every now and again. So welcome, really happy to see everybody. Um, I see a new face, Perry, hi again. Saw Perry at the Evolution Working Group meeting a little bit ago. Um, so glad to see you again. And um, yeah, if, uh, oh, hey, Emily, let's drop the minutes in here for you as well. If people can add their names, if you have it and you want to, that'd be great. If you don't, also fine. And again, just a reminder, you don't need to keep your camera on. You can leave it off. And if you would prefer to chat in the chat on the side, um, the text chat, totally fine. We'll try to integrate that into the course of the meeting. So that being said, let's hop to it. I will share my screen, maybe. Sean. Oh, do I have to? I got it. Nope, you're good. I got All right. It. Okay. Uh, oh, I'll even add my name here, maybe. Um, so the first item is basically, um, we're going to add some things in that we don't normally talk about, obviously. Um, Chaos Con recap. So thank you to everybody. Here's a lovely photograph of us being silly. Um, it was a great conference. Uh, it was awesome. Um, we wanted to kind of bring up a couple of things post-conference. Um, we are going to be surveying the participants. So if you participated either virtually or in person, keep an eye out for that. Um, I know we wanted to talk about this in the meeting, though, because um, we have to get the we, we, I think we have to get the emails from the LF since they were the one that ones that kind of controlled um, registration for us. Um, and I think some people kind of had some concerns about um, having to go through them to get the emails. I know I know, Kevin, you had a, a comment about that. I don't know if you want to speak to that right now or. Uh, so a lot of the. Uh... So we, we have we have this really nifty DEI badging, which is which is wonderful. Uh, so for for Chaos Con this time around, a lot of the the DEI badging stuff, we uh, we are compliant with it uh, because we were co-located with uh, Open Source Summit, and Open Source Summit was compliant with with DEI badging. Uh, so, which which is excellent, by the way. Uh, but the but the comment that that I had in the uh, in the Slack channel uh, that I believe that you're referring to is, I think in the future we need to not be reliant on uh, the co-located events to uh, to make us compliant in DEI badging. We should uh, and and specifically those those DEI issues. We should we should kind of own those ourselves. Uh, so and one of those one of those things is in the survey, right? So we should do the survey ourselves, uh, and we should uh, another another area is within the uh, the documentation that uh, uh, the documentation that is required to get the badging. Uh, we should maintain some of that documentation ourselves. We should create specific DEI policies and uh, supporting documentation and have that publicly posted on the website so that we are compliant with uh, DEI badging ourselves. Uh, and I'm, I'm thinking primarily for the next event because it may not be co-located with a Linux Foundation uh, uh, conference. Do people have thoughts about that? I mean, some some of the things I think it's completely fine, but others I agree that we should think about it ourselves. So, for example, say like um, a mother's room would be. I mean, if the LF provides that as part of OSSNA, that wouldn't be something that we would have to do, just because we're a co-located event. Um, but I agree with you on the surveys. But we should certainly be doing those ourselves. I think we should go through a review process 
<clears throat> but then not display a badge, whatever, like if we get a badge, I don't think we should say chaos gave us this chaos badge at this chaos conference. I actually did that. I went through the checklist that you had for chaos con and just kind of made notes on that myself, just a word document. Yeah, I think it's also important to have people that are outside of chaos to review it too, so that we'd have that more objective viewpoint. So actually there was, okay, so I mean, while, while we're here, there was actually one issue. I'm sorry, Georg, were you gonna say something? You're, you're, you're really hard to hear. Okay, I fixed the input. I think we should display our own badge for our own events, leading by example. If we do that, I think we need to be careful in how we promote it, because I think there, there is something a little bit off about badging ourselves. It's like, hey, we're, we're good, so it's yeah. us, right? Right, yeah, yeah, that, uh, um, it's, a, it's awkward. I think we could use some language when we do that that says something to the effect of, you know, we are, uh, we we were we go through the process or we 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 plan the the events so that it uh, uh, so that we are compliant with uh, with the uh, badging or some such thing. But so I uh, I said this earlier. I don't know that I totally agree with that. I don't think that we should prevent ourselves from going through the process in an open and transparent way. Mm -hmm. We can have objective reviewers. We can just be attentive to that. So I, I, I actually kind of lean on on us going through the process. Yeah. I, I agree. I, I think we should yeah. go through the process. I'm just saying I think we need to be careful about how we promote the badging uh, for, for badge ourselves. Right? We can say we earned a badge and here's a link to the issue yeah. that was open and transparent and we responded to the concerns and just like anybody else. I think we can just display the badge on the event. It would be really awkward to just not have it as the project that <laughs> created the badge. I don't yeah. think we need to promote it in any way. We just have it. Just Sounds like we need a consensus of some sort about this because we have a lot of differing opinions. Well, I, I think I think the key is, is what Matt and Matt's, Matt German Prey's point was, which is we have independent folks do the review. So folks deeply involved in the badging program would be less objective, perhaps on the in terms of appearances than people we've recruited from the larger open source community. So who does our badging, who does the review of our badging is really the question, not whether or not we should be badged, if I'm hearing it correctly. Just, an, that. Yeah, just a, a note for, that's been your ringtone for like seven years, by the way. Well, is it, <laughs> I'm sorry, but the, the, it's pretty good the, one, C, but... the CTU desk ring is still important. <laughs> We are still at threat level orange. Yes, I, I always know you're around when I hear that. Um, <laughs> um, the, the one thing that we might want to make a note here, and just kind of a mental note for everybody, that we did have a little bit of discrepancy on that um, when I was kind of going through the process was we have our own code of conduct. We had our own like code of conduct reporting but then we also kind of lean on the LF and their code of conduct because we actually point out to the LF code of conduct. So there were kind of there were a, a few little mixed messages in there with respect to like so for example if if there was a um, something that needed to be reported during Chaos Con like I think I don't remember because I don't have it in front of me but like maybe Georg you were listed as somebody to contact you know during Chaos Con but then we also link out to the LF code of conduct and they're like if you see anything you know if you want to report anything then it goes to the Linux Foundation event team there was just did, the, there were two we, reporting mechanisms that's where did all. we link out to the uh, the chaos or the, the Linux Foundation code of conduct event team 
Well, is that on the? Is that actually on the website? Yeah. At least, unless I was somewhere else. Uh, so we should have. Yeah. We have a. In the past, we've had the code of conduct for the project, and then we've had the event code of conduct. Um, and this one, up, this one just links out to the the overall OSSNA code of conduct currently. I just clicked on it, and that's where it took. Oh, me. gotcha. Yep. Uh, okay, so I have a question. Um, when do we think, or do we even know, when the next Chaos Con might be occurring? Ordinarily, no. in regular times, it would be at FOSDEM. I suspect FOSDEM is not happening again okay. in 2022. So. Okay, so we don't know. Um, I feel like I just don't want this feedback and like our thoughts right now to get lost if it's going to be another year before we plan Chaos Con. Yeah, it might be so, a year. Can we? Oh, can we open an issue on the community repo so that it's like hey. have a placeholder somewhere? It's a great idea. I love <laughs> it when things happen like that. Oh, it makes me so happy. Okay. Like an issue could just be like thoughts for next chaos con or something yes. like that. We could kind of just drop all those in there. Yes. Okay. I will give myself an action item. Okay. I mean, Fosm. I I ping somebody on IRC. They say the announcement will be going out shortly, so we'll find out. I mean, Fosm. This year did happen. It was just virtual. It wasn't canceled, so that might be what's happening. But we'll see what format it takes. Okay. And then um, back up to B2 right here. Can we just post a link to the survey? So is that is that, are people cool with that instead of waiting on the LF to give us like the list of attendees that were there? Can yeah, we just I am. Just say if you attended, yeah. that's gone. Here it is. Okay, yeah. perfect. And then uh, one final thing on the survey. Um, Sophia, I see you're on. Do you do we think it's good enough to go? Like um, it probably needs a little help um i literally started throwing this together in the middle of like the very end of the program i was like oh we should have a survey um so i think it could use a little bit of love um i think that the big nuance here is whether or not we want to have a feedback question for every individual session or just one for the overall content um so probably i was thinking about adding a few questions that are just sort of like feedback around the overall event feedback around the agenda and format and logistics and then feedback on the content speakers and we could either do that per session or i mean i don't know about everyone else in the call but i, I feel like i have a hard time remembering what was what afterward huh. um but we did only have it wasn't that long of a program so we could ask it per session um so that we could give individual speakers their own feedback scores um, I, I'm happy to work on this and get this to a place where we can close it out in the next week or so. So um, I, I'm sorry, I'm mobile right now. So if folks want to put the link in the chat um, or in the doc, I can just extend access to anyone who wants to edit it and suggest. Is it in Slack, Sophia? Um, it's in Slack, yeah. But okay. I think I posted it in the, the committee group versus the general one. Gotcha. I'll go get it. Thank you for doing that, Sophia. Absolutely, yeah. Sorry, I'm sorry I'm not able to be on video. I'm currently walking down Central Park West. So <laughs> you're fine. That That's sounds dedication. fun. <laughs> yeah, I just appointment ran over, so I'm free but not stationary. <laughs> we'll we'll walk with you. It's totally fine. <laughs> We're all joining you as we speak. Um, okay, great. So we'll uh, work on the survey a little bit longer, and then uh, we'll just tweet, maybe tweet mailing list newsletter standard, the huge to post it out there. Um, okay, um, and then the live stream of the event has been recorded. I um, think that the goal is to do it in the next few days, because um, I know Matt 
Cantu is working on that. Um, I don't know, Matt, if you want to say anything, totally fine if you don't. Yeah, so we have the full live stream as it was. Uh, I covered up like um, most of the screens and all the ones that you could read and all that stuff. So that's security, I think is good. But um, I just want to know, do we want to post the live stream or the Linux Foundation also has a stream that's higher quality that we can splice in our audio to kind of cut like just the presentations? Or do we want to do the whole live stream and the presentation separately? Or what do we want to do with that? I think it's a question of how much time you have to do editing. It's also well, a question. A, not... It's also a question of whether or not we're going to be able to get the uh, the live stream from the foundation. So because uh, we didn't I pay for I it, didn't, so no, no. They, so they they did record it. Uh, so I, I talked to the uh, uh, the audio visual guy that was there, uh, and he did record it. Uh, however, my uh, my email to the uh, the events people, the response was that uh, that the uh, that the event team didn't record it. So so there may be some uh, uh, confusion. Should I go um, ahead and publish that um, that draft that we have of the of the whole live stream? Then I would yes, I would go ahead and put the whole live stream up. And then what we what we can add in the future is we'll we'll go through and we'll uh, we'll separate out each individual presentation, and we can use we can either cut up the live stream into individual presentations, or we can use the we also recorded the presentation ourselves, or we can use that, uh, and possibly if the Linux Foundation does share their recording with us. Uh, we could use that because their their equipment was uh, was quite impressive. So the the quality on their recording is uh, considerably better than ours. <laughs> uh, but I'm not sure we'll be able to get it. Um, I, I'm gonna. Oh, go ahead. oh, I was gonna say a plus one to Nicole's message in the chat to post individual sessions. Um, so I think it would, it would be nice to do that. I also, I don't know if we're still planning to do this, but I want to bring it up when we initially have plans, chaos on, knowing that the format was going to be a bit wonky in the hybrid scenario. Um, we would discuss potentially re-airing some of them as a group um, in terms of, say, posting the video and then maybe hosting a live QA with the, the speakers that weren't able to attend in person. Um, so I don't, I don't know if we still want to do that. I thought it might be nice, especially for the any recorded session that was done ahead of time, um, but uh, also maybe for sessions like Matt German and Praise that we had to cut at the last minute because we didn't have the extra 30 minutes we thought we had in the room. Um, but I mean, it doesn't have to happen immediately. The speakers have already agreed to do this if we want to do that. So I wanted to throw out that as a, a potential, more of a coordinated release of the recordings versus just, hey, we've got recordings. It can be, hey, we've got recordings. If you want to watch this, you could tune into a QA with the panelists at this time or something like that. Have we uh, uploaded? Go ahead, Kevin. I was just going to say so, have we uploaded all of the recorded presentations that we have to our YouTube channel yet? And, we and have not, not the, the ones, the not the ones that we have taken, not the ones that we have taken, the ones that the presenters sent us. I can do that. We don't have those uploaded, but I'll take an action item to put those in in descriptions and stuff. That that's maybe the first step, and then the second step would be to go through and upload all of the individual presentations that we recorded. Uh, and then once those are once we have a, a YouTube channel for that, uh, to Sophia's point, we can plan an event or group of events around those videos. Is that that seems good to me? So I can 
I can offer to split the video if you can get that to me. And I can prepare all the videos and upload them and create a playlist on our Chaos Cast. Not Chaos Cast. Chaos 2. Like we did in the past. Uh, we also added the video links to the Chaos website page where we have the PDF links to. Yeah. I did that the last year, so I can do that again. It takes about a day to do all the cutting and preparing, so I can do that. Thanks, Georg. Yeah, can you send me the... Yeah, I'll, I'll send it to you in Drive, probably. That's fine, so I don't have to download it off YouTube. Yeah, you lose fidelity. Yeah, sounds good. Okay. Okay, um, and then the slides are are available um, on the chaos website you'll see if you go to the that link you'll see there's a separate column for the PDF links to those slides. Um, my question that I had was the slides for the lightning talks I know they were in the chaos con slack channel, but do we want to post those two somewhere else. Could we i'm not looking at it, but are the lightning talks listed on the chaos con page not Just by the, not by the no. person they're Just only by three, the were not there uh, i feel like there were four don lucas uh the folks from uh washington uh all right kaylee kaylee, kaylee yeah. yep yeah i mean i I guess my only hesitation would be because those weren't part of the the submission process. There was no inherent opt in for oh, displaying yeah. the content. So if we do want to, um, then I, I guess I would just ask the presenters if they don't mind us posting it just to ensure that because they didn't uh, opt in officially by submitting it as part of a CFP. I can reach out to Kaylee. And I can reach out to all of them. Lucas, you're on here, so on the call. Lucas just put his slides in the chat. Yeah, I'm good. I'm, I'm, my slides aren't attractive, but I don't think they're going to be such huge Google bait that they'll you know, be a problem in future searches. <laughs> right on. <laughs> Google bait. I haven't heard that before. Um. Awesome. All right. Look at how productive we are. So much post-production stuff. That's what I kept thinking. Yeah. Mm. Here we thought we were done. No, <laughs> never done. Never done. Um, okay. Uh, anything else to wrap up Chaos Con? It was just so great to see everybody. And I'll put it in the, um, the survey, but I loved the half day session. That worked out pretty well. I'm, I'll be really interested to see how the virtual experience was. So for those who participated virtually, I hope that you fill out that survey because I'm super interested in that. Um, I did have one thing uh, that maybe we should talk about in wrapping up Chaos Con, which is um, what we want to do about privacy going forward. Um, there were um, a couple threads going there and one was, yeah, we want to think about this and then what exactly does it mean to do that? And I, what would we do in thinking about privacy for a given metric? Uh, but the other side is, well, that's a, a burden and kind of additional overhead for every metric, which I think is completely true. So um, we should decide what the consensus is on how to do this both efficiently and good enough that we feel satisfied. Is it like a privacy statement, Lucas? Is that? like for every metric, like how the metric might impact issues of privacy? Is that? I think um, I think that would be the maximal version, yes. So like uh, with a um, IETF media type, um, 
it's there's a requirement to have a security review um and um you know like making a media type is really burdensome it's like it's the simplest possible rfc and it's still a lot of work um so i don't want to downplay the problems created by adding more and more required sections but that would be I think the most maximal, maximal version of this. I mean, I, the reason I ask is because we're doing something similar with respect to how um, a metric can impact uh, thinking about DEI, diversity, equity, and inclusion. So yeah, it sounds yeah. similar to that. That's interesting. Yeah. Kevin, I think you have a lot of background noise. Can you mute yourself? Oh, sorry. Thanks. I mean, I think it potentially could be as simple as just a published checklist <laughs> um, where if we put together, say, a template of areas that could potentially yield privacy concerns in terms of, say, like this metric requires the collection of sensitive PII, especially as it relates to a person's, how that person identifies or affiliates with, like those are things that we know are and then we look at the and bring back the NIST categorization of PII or something like that. So if we have a, a list of questions or indicators that could go with each metric that relates to the implementation of the metric and the privacy implications of collecting data to generate that metric, then it doesn't necessarily have to have a warning flag or any sort of perceived guide, like guidance because we don't, we don't want to overstep here again from a liability perspective. We're just trying to surface more information that can help anyone who might implement the metric consider the privacy implications of actually using that metric. Um, so like so even something like understanding your contributor population, like if are you collecting names, then like then you get like that box is now checked in as an indication that you might want to consider having some sort of privacy policy that is expressly stating how you will be collecting and storing and maintaining this information. So I think, I don't necessarily think we have to write recommendations. I don't think we have to have that guidance again, because we're, we're not lawyers or regulating bodies, <laughs> but if we have some sort of like, I don't know, like a five question rubric of like, does this collect PII? Does this collect mm. like what kind of information does this collect? And those things would be, filled out by the metric submitter so that if if like say like three out of five boxes are checked in that rubric then then the automatic recommendation is like you might want to consider privacy documentation around this or privacy documentation project before implementing a metric like this kind of thing are we, are so we, is the question that we're trying to answer with the metrics really one directed at people who will actually use the metric in the development of tools and the collection of data? Yeah, I mean, Lucas, please correct me if I'm, I'm wrong, but I guess for me and my role, you, when you need a privacy statement or a documentation in place is when you actually start collecting that information. Just talking about it is not, does not warrant the need for it, but if you actually are trying to measure something and it requires the collection of PII in order to measure it, now you have a data set containing PII. Um, and you need some sort of documentation to govern how that data set is maintained. So I think it's, it's sort of the like, the indication that you should take further action here, or you should consider taking further action or involve your, your legal team, depending on what, what your, the status of your entity is. But um, that's kind of how I interpreted it in terms of privacy implications at the point of measurement versus we're just talking about metrics um so there there isn't any privacy implication for what we what we publish just how it could be implemented right right i see your point i, I was visualizing that um there's a metric like uh, attribution for example that um would pretty likely um clash with gdpr uh in a in a typical implementation um, and an implementer would 
want to have that flag. Because there are potential real consequences for implementers, like you could um, violate the GitHub terms of service and then your business would have, you know, would be risking uh, being disconnected. Yeah, so we, I, we have a, oh, sorry. No, uh, yeah, go ahead. So, so we, we, have, we have given this some thought in the past. Uh, most recently, uh, we talked about it when we were adding, uh, when we added the diversity, equity, and inclusion line item to the, uh, the quality checklist, where, where every, every metric we, we create has some sort of implication for DEI. So we, we, we mention it in the objective section of the template. Uh, and when, when we talked about this, so when, when we talked about uh, uh, privacy uh, as it relates to each of these metrics, the, and you had mentioned this earlier, it does become, it would become quite a uh, uh, burden, burden uh, burdensome to uh, to each individual metric. So I think prior, what we had kind of decided was to treat the privacy issues uh, and and data collection issues uh, at a at a higher level rather than at a metrics level. So uh, as as the chaos project, we we could have a the the data ethics statement or a disclaimer statement that says you know. Hey, you, using some of these metrics may violate uh, uh, is GD, GDP, 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 GDPR, GDPR. Uh, however, so it, and obviously that this decision could change, but I think at the at the time we decided that adding that item to each individual metric could be quite difficult. I'm sorry. Can you share an example of where something is actually? out of sync with GDPR because I always thought it had to do something with how it was implemented in terms of say like where the data is stored, how it's protected and maintained as well as the ability to redact and remove. Like if you are able to achieve all of those governing efforts, where, is, where are we still running into issues of it being out of compliance with GDPR? Uh, the attribution metric is the one where this um, came up. Which uh, outputs Attrib a list okay. of contributors, and and so in this, I mean, in that case, I think the way the metric functions in the Drupal community, and I can't speak for Matthew Tift, but people want that attribution and want that disclosure of what they've done, and I I think make I think to your point though, we would want to make a note that there may be people who don't want the attribution. And there, there needs to be some mechanism in place or in practice to allow them to not be you know, revealed publicly. Okay, so this is an excellent conversation and I hate to cut it short, um, but I know that we have metric stuff to talk about as well. So um, can we put this on the agenda for next week as well and just kind of keep thinking about this? So I think it's super important and I, I don't want to lose this momentum. Is that okay with everybody? Works for me. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Seems pragmatic. Okay, awesome, awesome, awesome. I just want to give enough time for um, Kevin Yash and Ritik to um, talk about the metrics release, which is, is happening um, pretty soon since the review period is now over. So um, I will let Kevin kind of take this and run with it, if that's cool. You want to just say whatever you want? <laughs> I don't know. I, I mean, I can read the, the agenda items if you want, but I know that Yash and Ritik uh, and Kevin also have some things to add. So y'all can take it away. Okay, so uh, for that, for point A, uh, the review period is now closed. So I would like to uh, kind of make that explicit and say the, the public review period is now closed. However, I would encourage all of the working groups to go back and do a, a review of the metrics to get them ready for, released, for release. So. Uh, 
So that review would include going through and making any edits based on the comments, but it would also be a, a review. Just go through and read it and make sure that the metric looks the way that you want it to look when it's released. Uh, so uh, the target date for the release is October 18th, which gives the working groups two weeks to, to get the metrics into a release state. Uh, Minimum of one meeting per working group, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so following that October 8th English metrics release date, uh, we are going to give the, uh, the Chinese translation team about a week to update their metrics based on our edits. So right now, they're, they're, the Chinese release should look exactly like ours does. However, after we've gone through and made our edits, there will be some minor changes. Uh, so in the, the Chinese translation team has said that they, uh, that they think they can do that in a week in the past. So. So the target is to release the, the metrics on the 18th after, after this two week uh, working group review and edit process, uh, and then release the Chinese metrics one week later. And I will be, uh, I will be showing up to as many working group meetings as possible this week to, uh, to gently remind you all. I have a recommendation that the working groups create an issue in the translations repository as soon as each metric gets finalized they, when they incorporate the changes from the review. So they give a little more time than one week to the Chinese translations team to get the changes incorporated. So I would I would say that each of these metrics should have a issue already created. Uh, mm -hmm. So I'm wondering if I'm wondering if we should create a new issue or if we should just go back and I think the the process they have right now is when they are done translating the uh, the metric they remove the Chinese translation label. So would it be better should we create a new metric or should we just add the Chinese translation label back to the metric and maybe a Make a comment that says this this metric has been edited. Would that adding the label once again works fine, I guess. Unless anyone has any other thoughts. And then, if there are no changes to the metric, they don't working groups don't have to do anything. Is that right? Uh. Correct. So as far as uh, uh, if there's no changes to the metric, they don't need to do anything with the translation team. However, every metric will have a minor change because there is a at the very top of the metric, there is a, a piece of text that says this metric is under review and that text needs to be removed. So uh, so every metric will have an edit, but that uh. Uh, that top text doesn't affect the the Chinese translation. Or at least it shouldn't. And maybe I should uh, double check with the translation team to see if they were including that, that text in their translations. Georg, I see you're adding some comments there. Do you uh, want to say anything about that? Yeah, I was looking at some metrics earlier, um, and I noticed that some pictures weren't loading. My suspicion is that with switching the default branch name on GitHub to main, from master to main, that some of those links were broken. So it would be great if everyone could just look at the metrics, make sure all the links work and all the images load, and if not, open issues. And then the other question I have is whether all working groups with with this release, now is a good time to make that switch. We'll use the main name for the default Git branch. 
because then moving forward, we are consistent. So That's Kevin, you said, Kevin, you said you're going into every working group, right? This week? Yeah, I have. Yeah. Okay. I think, I think I've been to most of the working groups already. Okay. I just don't want any of this vital information to not get filtered back to the working group people, the leaders of the working groups that aren't, may not Nudging be here. Nudging is in the process. <clears throat> Nudging is in the process of doing that. So a question is like, do we have as a working group have to change it? Like, because I think it will break the links or is it uh, has to be done in coordination with Kevin so that it gets updated on the website too. So. So what it, is the best process? It does need to be done in coordination with me so that it's not broken on the website. Uh, however, uh, you know that that's easy enough to do. You just need to tell me tell me when. So we could set we could set that October eighteenth deadline for moving to Maine as well. Uh, so edit, review, and edit your metrics and change your repo to uh, your your main your main repo branch. Right? I think most of the working groups have done that already. Uh, three of no, them. No, I don't think so. No, okay. No. Uh, risk evolution and... Uh... Yeah, I think, I think some of the discussions that you and I have been in together, Kevin, we did, I guess you're right, we did postpone a few of them because we didn't want to interfere with the metrics release process. Right. I think yes. value, value in common need to move to Maine? I uh, just I think all the metrics working groups uh, and common and DI already on main. The ones okay. that still need to be done are evolution, risk, and value. But Sean, yeah. Sean, you moved evolution and risk, didn't you? I thought I did, but um, uh, I recall the discussion we postponed. Um, we may have, because, yeah, we might because, have postponed because, it because of metrics. Of release. metrics yeah, metrics. so those the groups all agree to do it, and we we haven't done it because we don't want to add something to your pile in the middle of the metrics release. Okay, just uh, just do it and break it, and then let me know you broke it, and I'll go in and fix it. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, after are you it, sure? Tick, did you have a comment? Yeah, I was saying that are we shifting from master domain only for the working groups or all the repos in general? It's a larger question. My hope yeah. is all, all repositories is my yeah, hope. Yeah, I think there's, there's dependencies on some of the more software intensive repositories. So for example, moving Augur was a bit more work uh, than moving a working group because we have integration and testing tools that tie into that that branch that had to be reconfigured. And I think that um, all the Grimoire Lab tools face the same um, workload over more repositories. So uh, I don't think it, I think, I think there's just, it's gonna take some software projects longer to do it than it will take the working groups because the number of dependencies they have are more complicated and numerous. So to the uh, to the point that Georg had made about some of the links and images being broken, I'm wondering if uh, and this is kind of a, this is kind of a concern I've been having anyway with some of the metrics getting a little stale. I'm wondering if the uh, for the next review period, perhaps we could ask the working groups to go through and revisit. Uh, all of their metrics and do kind of a review to make sure the links work and make sure the text is still good. Uh, or uh, I wonder if I wonder if we could focus on that for the next review period. Yes, I totally agree. So yeah, links, images, and and maybe even the the content of the metrics themselves. Do does this metric still make sense? Have we changed the language? You know, because evolution is, we've changed the name of a few metrics. We've, uh, uh, Has anybody ever read an, a paper that they wrote like a year ago? And you're like, oh, <laughs> what was I thinking? <laughs> yeah. 
I think the, these, you know, it's, it's just, it's words, right? Yeah. I think it's important to revisit the words that we use and make sure that we're expressing what we want to express. And so I think it's yeah. a very, very good thing. I feel like there should be an issue in the community repo about this <laughs> ideas for what we want to do for the next metrics release. Cause yeah. it's, you know, six months from now. So. Right. And this, this certainly affects everybody, like all the working groups. While, while you're hanging out in that community repo, making that other issue <laughs> about chaos, Con, you want to drop this one in there? Happy to. Right I on. love it. Okay, well, um, we have one minute <laughs> before the meeting's over. Um, we will have to skip the working group updates this time, but um, it's okay. I think they're pretty minor given the release and the chaos con. Right. It's mostly, yeah, going over metrics, feedback, and um, chaos con. So, uh, oh, a quick question though. Um, do we have somebody, is Common working group this week? Does anyone know off the top of their head? Top of my head, I don't know. Okay. Uh, hold on a second. I, I can tell you. Oh, no, uh, it's okay. a value working group. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I just is next week. Because um, Don's out, right, for that conference. So I just want to make sure somebody was going to be there to do the changes. But if it's not till next week, then we're good. We're good. Uh, her and we actually talked at the conference about that. She was she was a little bit worried about uh, uh, the release because Common is the Common doesn't meet until next week, right? So the so we have we have kind of talked about that a little bit. Okay. Awesome. Um, she is aware of it. 10 steps ahead of me already. I love it. Um, okay, real quick, we're one minute over. Anybody have any final things to say? Say them fast. Great chaos, Con. Good to see everybody. In, good to see lots of you in person for the first time ever or the first time in a long time, so. Here, here. Next time we can maybe do hugs, like without, you know, feeling weird or, uh. All right. <laughs> anyway, Perry, thank you for coming. It was great All to right. see you. And Thanks. welcome. And yeah, I guess Thank we will have me. Good to see everyone. Good to see you. Bye. Awesome. All right. Bye. I will see you all next week. Bye. Thanks, Bye. everybody. Bye. Bye now.